One of the themes that I constantly repeat at every climate dialogue that I participate in is that the battle against climate change is, of course, an obligation we have to our next generations to protect the planet. But it's also the biggest business opportunity of the next decades. So my story is essentially about how do we get more traction amongst businesses to recognize this opportunity. And the story uh, begins at our automotive uh, R&D center in Chennai, South India, back in 2013. And it's an automotive R&D center. It's meant to be doing automotive R&D. But anyone who knows engineers knows that you can not make them walk down any narrow path. They will do whatever they want to do. And we had a PhD from the Indian Institute of Technology who was meant to be working on hydrogen propulsion systems. But he chose to work on how to use food waste and turn that waste into energy. Food waste was one of the least used forms of biomass. Now, the, his boss tried to get a budget for him to do this. And we have something called a sandbox where we allow engineers to, to experiment. But the head of our automotive business couldn't see how this had to do with automotive in any way possible. So it became difficult, and the good thing was that this man, in any case, was finally given a budget out of our corporate social responsibility allocation, and he went ahead and developed this pilot plant for about 10 tons of waste a day, and he justified it by saying, I'm building a carbon-neutral ecosystem. There's a fancy title he put to what he wanted to play around with. And he found a logic to apply it to one of our cities, because our real estate business has developed a special economic zone called Mahendra World City. And he said, let me see if I can take all the food waste in that city and convert it to energy which will power all the transport. He did that successfully. In 2016, at the launch, the then power minister of India, Piyush Goyal, acceded to come for the launch. And he was so impressed, he said, there should be a 1,000 of these plants around the country. This should be a business. So that sparked further thought. Suddenly, that experiment was, came out of the shadows. And the head of our auto business then evangelized it to our other businesses. And our diesel genset business, which obviously is a threatened business, if you look at it a few years down the road, said, let me look at this. That business today is one of our fastest growing business verticals. We put up nine plants. We have a 40 ton a day plant already in the city of Indore which is known as India's cleanest city. We've done our bit for it. We have a 100 ton a day plant coming up in Delhi. And all of this started with serendipity. So that was the title of my story, setting the stage for serendipity. So what are the lessons? And I'm going to summarize them quickly, because I think India warned us that that gong, if you don't listen to it, it becomes an unidentified flying object in your direction. So I'm going to summarize and quickly give you the lessons. Lesson one is. Let a hundred flowers bloom. And I give full copyright to Mao Zedong for that statement, of course. But the fact is, you have to allow experiments to happen. And you have to allow people to do their thing. You cannot get business to, to take up this opportunity by mandating it, by telling them there's a grand vision. People like to think that leaders have grand vision. Maybe they do, but you've got to allow serendipity to flourish. The second thing is you need to have people who will spot serendipity. Just as you have trend spotters, you need serendipity spotters. You need people who are going to go around, look through your ecosystem, and eventually say, you know what, this could be a great business. Because that's the way it happens. When the story is rewritten, it won't be because Anand Mahendra woke up one morning with an epiphany and decided to save the world. It's going to be because some engineer was doing his own thing, and we found links. And the final lesson is build an ecosystem, a network of people. We were liaising with the IIT Chennai and IIT Delhi. They were academicians. They had varied interests. Their goal only wasn't to help us make our next car. So the wider your ecosystem, the wider your network, the more likely you are to make serendipity a certainty. Thank you. Thank you, Dan.